So the Doppler effect doesn't just affect sound waves, it affects all waves, so including light that we'll talk about next time, but I wanted to bring it in here since we're talking about the Doppler effect. Um, what happens is the same idea. If I have an object emitting light and it's moving towards me, it's going to emit, a, a, it's gonna show as a shorter frequency wave. Light and colors, all colors have a different frequency. So a shorter frequency of light is actually going to be more blue. In the opposite direction, those waves are going to be more spread out, leading to a lower frequency. And as that light travels away from me, it's going to become more red, or what we call red shift. And in astronomy, what we find is that all stars actually experience this red shift, which tells us that all the stars that we observe are actually traveling away from us and the universe is expanding. That's how we figured out that the universe is expanding is because of the Doppler effect of on light. So constructive and destructive interference, this happens when two or more waves overlap, they collide with each other. Constructive interference is when two waves overlap and the crests line up or the troughs line up. With destructive interference, it's when two waves come together and they're going to have a crest and a trough that line up. So one crest is going to line up with the other trough and when they collide, they're going to cancel each other out. So noise canceling headphones, is the, it, they use destructive interference because they will send out a, a wave, an opposite wave, to whatever sound is coming in so that a crest and a trough will line up and it's gonna flatten that sound wave. So with constructive interference, when we're talking about sound, it's gonna produce a louder sound, and with destructive interference, it's gonna produce a softer sound. Here's a visual of what that looks like. So on the left, we have our constructive interference. We have wave A and B, they're both crests. They're going to collide in the middle and create a taller, a higher amplitude sound. And then when they pass each other, they are going to, uh, be the same as they were before the collision. So once they pass each other, they go back to how they usually were. With destructive interference, we have a crest and a trough that collide in the middle. And you can see that this is just as high as this is low. So when they collide, it flattens out the sound here and you wouldn't hear anything in this instance. And then they pass each other and they return, return to their normal shape. So harmonics and resonance. Harmonics are frequencies that uh, create constructive wave interference and increase the amplitude of sound. You can think of this as a guitar string and we'll take a look at a figure in a moment. Um, but resonance is the natural frequency in a, of an object or material at which it will oscillate. So when you uh, flick the edge of a glass and it makes a sound, that's the resonance, that's the natural frequency for that object and it's always going to pick the first harmonic. And we'll take a look at all the different harmonics on the next slide. But whenever you uh, just uh, flick a glass and it makes a sound, it's going to choose its first harmonic. It doesn't just happen with glasses, though everything has uh, resonance. And this is very important when it comes to construction because all buildings, bridges, offshore oil rigs that are going to experience frequencies of wind or frequencies of waves, if those waves match up with the natural resonance of that object, it's going to cause the object to sway uncontrollably back and forth and possibly um, bring it down, destroy the, the building. So here we have the, uh, a string that represents the different harmonics. So imagine this is a gu guitar string. When you just pluck a guitar string, it's going to do its fundamental frequency. And that is where we have half a wave and it's just going to go back and forth, back and forth. The second harmonic, if I were to um, oscillate this uh, string with a high enough frequency, I would start to see that two waves or two crests and two um, troughs start to form. And if I oscillate it even faster, it'll create three uh, different open areas like this. If I oscillate even faster, it will create four open areas just like this. All right, I'll be right back. 